and what that will really entail is you know we, we will as a team discuss what our priorities are and that will be absolutely based on talking to uh, as I say to community groups and to charities and to veterans themselves uh, and we'll decide what issues we we want to support that the government are pushing and of course we will support the government when we think they're doing the right thing but also where they're not and where they're falling short you know how do we best hold them to account my name is Johnny Ball and I'm the founder of Campaign Force, a not-for-profit that inspires, trains and coaches the armed forces community to stand up and serve again. I've served on the front line of military operations and in civilian life, the front line of UK politics. This Veterans in Politics podcast is a set of interviews brought to you by Campaign Force and sets out to explore how the military community can help make our politics a better place. I lean into my little black book of contacts and sit down with individuals from across the world of politics, sharing secrets, giving tips and advice and inspiring the next generation. We are Campaign Force. This is the Veterans in Politics podcast. Let's introduce you to our guest. In this episode, we meet the Shadow Veterans Minister, Stephanie Peacock MP. Stephanie gives us an insight to how the Shadow Defence Team operates in Westminster and her own efforts reaching out to the veterans community. It's time for you to meet our guest. I'm absolutely delighted today to be joined by Stephanie Peacock, the Shadow Veterans Minister, um, back in Veterans in Politics, the podcast. Um, how are you today, Stephanie? Are you well? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good, Johnny. It's good to join you. No, it was it was an absolute delight to meet you the other the other day and to talk about wider, deeper veterans issues. And indeed, it was brilliant to be able to have your predecessor on the podcast as well. But before we get into all of that, um, it'd just be really interesting to hear a little bit more about your journey into politics and how you started out getting involved in public life yourself. Yeah, sure. Well, well, growing up, I always took a sort of interest in current affairs. My dad always sort of watched the news and we used to talk about it. My mum worked in the NHS, so I sort of saw firsthand the impact um, on the NHS through the 80s and the 90s. Um, so I had a sort of interest in the world around me and I, I joined the Labour Party quite young and I was very lucky to have a really encouraging local MP at that time, a woman called Sylvia Heal. And I ended up working for her part time after I finished my A-levels and decided to go to university and carried on sort of working for her part time. Um, and then I decided to become a teacher. So I taught history and politics in a secondary school, which I have to say is probably the hardest job I've I've done. (laughs) Um, And then I went into working for trade union. So I've been quite involved in the labour movement. I've done a couple of different jobs and I decided, well, you know, what would the next step be? And I thought, well, yeah, I'm going to put myself forward uh, for election and, and sort of rest is history, I guess. Wow. Wow, that's a that's a whistle stop tour and a half that one. Um, and <laughs> yeah. clearly, you're doing really well in your career, and you're now the Shadow Veterans Minister, which obviously I is a subject very close to my heart. Indeed, the the community within which I work with day in day out, and the listeners to this podcast too. But being a Shadow Minister, can you tell us a little bit more about what that entails? What's the role like? What are the you know, responsibilities? What's your day to day engagement like, mm-hmm. as well as that of being an MP, of course? Yeah, of course. Well, I represent Barnsley East in South Yorkshire. And as you say, as well as that, I'm on Labour's front bench as our Shadow Veterans uh, Minister. So I guess the role is I'm part of the, def- the Shadow Defence team. So we've got John Healy, the Shadow Secretary of State, and we work together as a team. And, you know, our role really is to hold the government to account, to sort of critique and push them to do better, and also to offer an alternative vision for what Labour would do in government. I guess day to day, what does that mean? We, you know, we meet as a team every week. Uh, we will push certain campaign issues that we really care about or that we know are important uh, to the forces community. I'm obviously quite new to the role, so it's important to me to meet as many stakeholders, charities, veterans. Uh, and anyone who really thinks that you know they've got something to say and, and they want to be heard and so we, we try and meet as many people as we can we listen and then we do what we can to put forward and, and give a voice to their concerns and obviously you'd have met a lot of veterans within your own community as an MP mm-hmm. anyway so what an amazing opportunity to be able to voice be their voice um, in opposition uh, get you know with working with the government as well at times but what's it like um, coming together as an opposition team and what's it like in terms of going up against the government on those big mm-hmm. issues of the day what's that like for you 
Well, it, it'll, it'll depend on what's going on in Parliament. Of course, we've just seen the Armed Forces Bill go through Parliament, and I'm quite new to the team, so I did take part in that, and I spoke at, uh, you know, in, in the Commons on that. That was taken through by, by Stephen and Sharon before me. Uh, and what that will really entail is, you know, we, we will, as a team, discuss what our priorities are, and that will be absolutely based on talking to, uh, as I say, to community groups and to charities and to veterans themselves. And we'll decide what issues we, we want to support that the government are pushing. And of course, we will support the government when we think they're doing the right thing. But also where they're not and where they're falling short, you know, how do we best hold them to account? So we're going to put forward an amendment on, for example, you know, uh, extending the covenant and making sure it covers more areas. And we've got to make that case and make that argument to the government. And, you know, we, we weren't successful with our amendments with this piece of legislation. Some occasionally you will be. And it's not just those points in the House of Commons. You'll have what's called committee stage where you sit, literally go line by line and sit across a, a table, uh, your committee room. And you have those discussions and conversations with the government. So it, it really varies depending on whether it's a piece of legislation in the Commons and you're having that conversation and you're having that debate and you're putting forward your argument. Or whether it's something else, you might do that through questions, you might ask to meet the minister, you might write to them or put written questions down. And um, so, for example, myself and John, alongside Keir Starmer, you know, the, the, lead, the Labour leader, met with the nuclear veterans because, you know, I'm sure many of your listeners will be completely aware of, of the sort of the situation they've terribly been through. And, um, you know, at the very basic point, what they're asking for is to be heard and to be met with and to be listened to. Of course, they've got more asked, absolutely rightly so. You know, they want to see recognition. They want a medal. They want an acknowledgement from their government of the service they gave and the impact it had on their health and the health of their families. And in order to get that recognition, they would like a meeting and the government just simply aren't meeting with them. They, they're not responding to their letters. So as an opposition, we've met with them. We've made a commitment about what we would do if we were the government. Um, we want to use our platform to push the government to meet with them. Well, that's that's fascinating to hear the, the nuts and bolts behind these things, because mm. for many people, um, including those that are just have a general interest in politics, this will all seem a little bit mysterious of that committee stage and how it all works behind the scenes. Mm. So thanks for for sharing that with us. And you mentioned, obviously, an older set of veterans there, mm -hmm. a part of our really wide and varied community. Um, but one area of, of the veterans community that I'm quite keen to promote are the younger veterans as well. Um, and as those 15,000 service leavers leave every year, um, they become veterans and many of which, you know, we call them veterans, but they're in their 20s, 30s, 40s. Um, and with your background in education, how might we better engage with younger veterans um, as you know, whether that be encouraging to step forward and serve in public life like you or in local government, or indeed, how might we engage them with them better about getting their education squared away before they actually transition out of the armed forces? And I think you're in a really unique position to be able to comment on that, given your background in education. Yeah, and no, I think it's a really important point and, a, and you know, a really important issue. And um and I guess I'd say two things. So in terms of sort of squaring off the education before they leave the armed forces and before they transition, um, before I was in this role as Shadow Veterans Minister, I took part in the Parliamentary Armed Forces Scheme, uh, where for, for those that, that perhaps haven't heard of it, it's where MPs uh, shadow one of the forces. So I've, uh, I've done the army and the RAF and we go and we, we do all sorts of different visits. So, so most of them are in the UK, some of them are overseas. Uh, you'll go to different bases, they tend to have different themes, so it might be, you know, in the army you're looking at artillery or you're looking at training, um, so each of the visits has a different theme, you go along and you meet service personnel and you talk to them about their job, and it's one of the most valuable things I've done uh, since being elected, I find it really useful and I think it it will help me um, in, in this role, but one thing that struck me on, on one of those visits was that those in our armed forces whatever job they do whatever rank they're at they gain so many transferable skills and they work in so many different um experience they have so many different experiences they work at different levels they're using different it systems they're interacting with people there is so many transferable skills and are are, are those leaving the armed forces making the best of those are they selling them well enough well, some of course will be uh but actually, if you look at you know, the experience of, a, of someone who serves in armed forces, whether that be for, for a couple of years or for 20 years, uh, you compare that to other, other parts of life. I think they actually have a huge amount to, to sell. And, and how can we help support those that are transitioning to, to really make the best of this kind of amazing skill set um, that they've got? 
so I think there's, there's something in that and, and I find that really interesting on that on that visit and the second point is really important in terms of encouraging those uh, as you say to sort of stand up and serve again and um, you know, I've always believed that that Parliament the House of Commons should sort of it should seek to to reflect the society that we want to represent and too often it doesn't and we need to make sure uh, that we do have people from all walks of life you know all classes all ages or races uh, and I think a huge part of that and a really important part of that is our armed forces and and so now I think it's a really important campaign and you've got a pretty good role model in uh, locally to you and Dan Jarvis of course uh, yeah absolutely, friend, absolutely. Was... <laughs> friend of the show he came up came on the show as well and, and spoke to to our community so uh, but yeah no, he's, a, he's right. a great you know he's a great friend and he's a great colleague and as you say a really good example of uh, of you know the difference that the people can make when they when they serve the country you know in the armed forces and then what they can do in parliament it's really interesting to hear about the Armed Forces Parliamentary Scheme you're on, you're on as well. Um, I mean, uh, how was that? Did you find it difficult? I, I find it really interesting. You, they give you combats to wear, so you have you have to wear the combats, and obviously, uh, it doesn't model a uniform as such. But you do have to wear it properly, and the, and you and the, and the idea behind that um, was they said they wanted uh, MPs who visit to sort of blend in. They didn't want us to turn up in our mm. suits and smart clothes. They wanted uh, us to blend in so that when we meet people, we get an honest account of, of what of what's happening, good and bad. And so I found it fascinating. I found it really, really, really interesting. And I've done all sorts of things, you know, as part of it. So I'm very lucky to have done it. And that's just one way in which the MPs can actually engage with the armed forces community. And I actually think we can transfer that into other sectors, you know, whether that be health or or the police, just to really get that ground truth. I think it's such a brilliant scheme. And, and the more that we talk about it and promote it, the better, really, because not that many people know about it. Obviously, I know about it being a bit of a political geek, but um, it's, it's really good to be able to meet MPs that have been on that and, and to actually hear that you've benefited from it as well. And that's just obviously one way in which MPs and indeed the Labour Party are engaging with the, the armed forces community. But in terms of the wider veterans community, um, how else is, is Labour engaging? Uh, what, you know, what has it achieved and, and what would you like to see change for the future for the party and, and for your wider engagement? Well, yeah, I'm really excited to have taken over this role. I'm quite new to it. I'm just a few months in. Uh, and, you know, the first thing I wanted to do was to learn, really, because, you know, I am new to the role and I want to make sure that I understand the priorities and the campaigns and the issues that are important to the veterans community. So I've done my best to, to start meeting uh, charity stakeholders, veterans, and obviously there's lots of different groups across the country. A lot of, been, a lot of that has been virtual at the moment, but keen as restrictions have lifted to, to go out and about across the country and meet people. So do so get in touch if you... If you, if you want me to come and visit or you think you've got you know something you want to say and um, how are we engaging well I was I was excited as one of the first things you know, I did as shadow veterans minister was to launch Labour's veteran survey and so I'd encourage all your listeners to take part in it I'm really keen um, to hear what people have got to say it's a pretty straightforward survey you can fill it in online or we've got a paper copy um, that can be easily sort of photocopied if you've got groups that, that get together um, and we're, what we're going to do is use that as a, as a sort of tour to talk to, to veterans, to hear what they've got to say, to perhaps hold some round table events and coffee mornings uh, and to really hear what the priorities are so that we can shape a, a manifesto and a platform for government that we think will will really support the community. That sounds like a really good approach. And um, and of course, we're, we're good friends with the, the Labour Friends of the Forces as well. It's fantastic to see how active they are, and many of, of the Labour friends have come on to our various webinars, and including when we've had Conservatives, uh, for example, as our speakers. You know, it's a proper cross community, a cross party community of of those events. Um, so, how how do you think the Labour friends of the forces will will go forward and fit and dovetail into that plan? Would you say? Well, I think it, you know they're a really great group. I've met with them myself. Um, I actually. They came up to campaign in the Batley by election because obviously they're acting members of the Labour Party. Um, so I think they're a really good group of people who, who uh, it, it's really important as a you know as a Labour Party and what we call a Labour movement where we have lots of different groups rep representing lots of different uh, parts of society. You know we've got Labour lawyers and so on. I think Labour Labour Friends of the Forces is is a really good 
um, sort of platform for those who've been in the armed forces to get involved in, in the party because I know if, even if perhaps you you know you might be a Labour voter, a strong Labour supporter, you know obviously it's you know very difficult as a member of the armed forces to to be involved in a political party for obvious for obvious reasons. So I think actually it's quite a good way of becoming involved in the Labour Party. It's a good entry point, and um, they do some really great events and, and go out and about as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and and long may it continue. These groups within the political parties of which we are engaged with on a day to day um, basis, it's, it's a really good link into the party because we as an organisation, you know, we don't uh, advise people on where they should go. Uh, but if they declare a particular interest, then we set up those introductions to our friends within the political parties. So it's a fantastic uh, organisation to which for us to engage with too. Um, and in terms of that wider veterans community, they're so varied from all walks of life in terms of my own service. I've you know served very proudly with uh, actually I was attached to the Yorkshire Regiment in Afghanistan. So I uh, got to know rugby league pretty well uh, for, for, for a while. Um, but how have you found the, the veterans community in your travels, those virtual travels as well in, in the last few months? And what's, what's the response been like when you've been talking to the veterans community? Yeah, really welcoming, really keen to have a conversation, to share their views, concerns, ideas. Uh, I find it really, really interesting. And as I say, I'm, I feel like I'm at the sort of beginning of this journey. Oh, awesome. Well, yeah, we're part of that community. And indeed, this does give give a good opportunity to engage with the armed forces community via our podcast too. Um, so yeah, long, long may that continue as well in your, in your role. And what do you think you're, you hope to achieve as a Shadow Veterans Minister? Have you got have you got a plan? Is there what what's what's uh what do you think you'll achieve in the role? Well, I think I should probably make one point about opposition, and that is you can you can do you know more in one day of government than you can do in a decade of opposition. And I hope that we will have some achievements, and I hope we will have some wins against the government, and we will uh we will we will change things. However, the only way we really change things is by winning an election and becoming the government. So, you know, I see my role as the Shadow Veterans Minister to hold the government to account, to um, tell them, you know, where they're going wrong, where they can do better. Obviously, to support them if they're if they're doing the right thing, uh, of course, and to be constructive. Um, you know, we're there as Her Majesty's opposition to, to make sure the government are held to account. And so, you know, that's the primary role. But it's also about, list, you know, as I've said, listening to the veterans community, hearing what their priorities and their concerns are and building a manifesto and a vision that hopefully people feel they can vote Labour for at the next election. And you're, you're a great campaigner from what I've seen. Uh, in your political career and that will fit there's lots of campaigns as you've already mentioned within mm -hmm. the armed forces community as well but what would you think you ought to achieve through those campaigns in terms of your wider political career when they look back when you finally you know, hang up your rosette and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and look back at your political career and what would you th what would you like to be remembered for through all those campaigns and all of that work i think something quite simple something you know that she tried her best and hopefully she made a difference Wow. Well, that that's really good advice because I think that resonates with the armed forces community. Uh, Stephanie, I think we'll leave it there. It's been really good to talk to you and to meet the the new Shadow Veterans Minister. And for anyone that's interested in that that survey as well, we'll put that survey within our show notes so people can access that and uh, get involved. Uh, and likewise with the Labour Friends of the Forces too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks to our guests and thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this podcast, hit subscribe now. Alternatively, you can support our mission by checking out in the show notes below where you can rate, donate or become our mate. Thank you.